the next thing that we're going to talk about today is about the most important relationship in your life, not just your falconry. The most important relationship in your life is your family. <clears throat> your wife, your husband, your, uh, your children, your parents. You want to be a falconer, I get that. But you, you will not be a falconer in a bubble. Uh, your falconry is going to inf affect everyone that you know. It'll, it'll affect the way that you work, the way that you live. Falconry is n not just a hobby, it is truly a lifestyle. And so you have to have uh, a great partner, whether it's uh, your, your wife, your husband, whoever you live with, your, your parents. You have to have a really, really strong relationship they need to understand what falconry is because they are as much involved in falconry as you will be. So don't just assume, oh, I'm going to go be a falconer um, and, the, and I don't have to worry about the rest of the world around me. No. If you're a falconer, your wife's a falconer, your husband's a falconer, your kids are falconers, and your grandkids are, are going, to be part of, going to be affected by falconry, everything in your life is going to be affected by, by this lifestyle. So, you know, I've, I've uh, known falconers that would uh, basically work a, a terrible job uh, all spring and summer long, so they can quit the job and leave for six months to go hawking with their birds. Uh, and uh, that doesn't lend itself to a real stable marriage or relationship. But they were so dedicated to their falconry that they, they couldn't have a good relationship. In fact, to be honest with you, of all the falconers I know, I know of very few falconers that have really great marriages. Uh, falconry has been known to break up a lot of marriages, and you need to be aware of that. Uh, I've told my students, uh, my apprentices, that if I ever hear that you are in a disagreement with your significant other about your falconry, I'll kick your butt. I am not going to allow my students to destroy their lives because of falconry because it does happen and it's happened far too often uh, I'm very very fortunate my sweet wife Susan you know she knew I was a falconer for years before she married me uh, she knew what she was getting into but I can promise you guys if at any point in time my sweet wife Susan comes up to me and says I just I just can't take it anymore I just can't take you being a falconer, I would give up falconry in a second to, uh, to be a good husband to my beautiful wife Susan and to be a good father to my children, a good grandfather to my grandchildren. That is far more important than anything that I can do in falconry. You know, I had uh, one of my students, one of my apprentices uh, came to me, and this was more than 20 years ago, in fact, closer to 30 years ago. He came to me and said, I really want to be a falconer. I sat down with him and we had this very discussion we're having right now. And we talked about the difficulties and the amount of time and effort that's involved in becoming a falconer. And at the end of our little discussion, uh, this particular individual, he, he's a clinical psychologist. He had a, a government practice and a private practice. And he, just, he worked very, very hard, very long hours. And, and he fi finally says, you know what? When I retire, I'll be a falconer. And I said, that's a good idea. And so basically 20 plus years went by. And I get a phone call from the same gentleman. And he says, I have re I'm semi-retired. I no longer have my government practice. I just have a small private practice. I think I have the time now. My children are grown. Uh, it, you know, everything's really stable in my life. I would like to be a falconer. And I says, perfect, let's, let's get started. So I started him on the process of becoming a falconer. We got him and we got his bird, got, got him to pass the tests and through the regulations, and equipment inspections, everything, and uh, got him his first bird. And at the end of the first, his very, very first falconry season, he basically came up to me and says, says, I can't do this. I actually would like to have a life. And falconry is not my life. And so he gave up his falconry. He appreciated the year that I spent with him teaching him how to be a falconer and helping him with all of his issues and problems. 
but he came to the realization, and rightfully so, that uh, that he really uh, could not possibly be a good falconer because he had far too many other interests that he wanted to pursue. Falconry is truly uh, a life's dedication to working with these animals. And if you're not willing to do that, then, you know, you can't just trap a bird, uh, spend a couple of weeks training it, go out and fly it for a month or two, and then, then put it in a chamber and be done with it for the next year until the next falconry season starts. Uh, these birds need to be an intimate part of who you are, an intimate part of your family relationship and dynamics. During the Renaissance period, the birds would, would go shopping uh, with their owners, go to church with their owners, go to school with their owners. The birds were, were part of their, their social identity. And, and even to this day, a good falconer uh, still dedicates that kind of time. I've never taken my birds to church. Um, I have taken to work with me and had them on a perch uh, nearby where, where they could see me all day long and that, and that was wonderful to have that kind of time and opportunity with the animals. Uh, so the, th the third relationship which is the most important relationship in falconry and in life is the recognition that there are more important things in life than falconry and that you don't sacrifice your family, your friends, your your entire lifestyle for falconry because it's very easy to do. And so that's the, the bit of advice I want to pass with this particular video. Be dedicated to falconry but don't let falconry control your life. Well we're going to talk to you a little bit later on our next video. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.